what is a crypto wallet? What role do crypto wallets play in the world of cryptocurrency? In this video, we're going to be diving into the world of crypto wallets. Whether you're new to cryptocurrencies or an experienced investor, understanding the different types of wallets is crucial. So we'll explore what crypto wallets are, the risks involved, and the importance of keeping your assets safe. My name is Seb Bunty, and I'm pretty experienced when it comes to wallets. I worked with Phantom, which was one of the fastest growing wallets in the space. What is a crypto wallet? A crypto wallet is a digital wallet where you can store your crypto assets. Crypto assets such as NFTs, Solana, Ethereum, US digital dollars. There are two types of crypto wallet, custodial and non-custodial. People normally start with a custodial wallet. This is a wallet that is owned by a centralized platform. By centralized, I mean something like a company where ultimately they control your crypto. So this is where you put someone else in charge of your digital assets. And then you log in with an email and password in order to access them, like a bank account. Now custodial wallets make it easy for users to convert their cryptocurrency to fiat currency. Fiat currency being something like Australian dollars, euros, US dollars, or any government issued currency, and then take that currency and deposit it into their bank account. Or the reverse, normally when people enter cryptocurrency, they need to take their fiat dollars from their bank account, send it to a company so they can then exchange it for cryptocurrency like Solana. Now there are certain risks involved in doing this. FTX is a good example of this. So is Celsius, as is BlockFi. In fact, the list is quite long. You may have heard about FTX in 2022. Essentially, FTX is a large company that was worth billions of dollars that was storing crypto for over 5 million users. They grossly mishandled their funds, borrowed from the people that deposited, and then when the users found out, they frantically withdrew their crypto and exposed the debt being billions of dollars. Some people individually lost millions. It was completely illegal, but it does teach us how to proceed in the future. Unfortunately, this happens in the traditional finance sector often as well, even worse. This happened in 2008 with the global financial crisis, happened in 2023 with multiple banks. It actually happened throughout the entirety of history. In fact, almost all banks have more debts than money deposited to them. This is the original reason why Bitcoin was created and a big part of why other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Solana were created. With all that craziness in mind, storing crypto somewhere safe that you have full control over is highly recommended. And this can be done easily by storing crypto in another type of wallet, a non-custodial wallet. A non-custodial wallet is a wallet that has a unique address used to send and receive cryptocurrency, but it also has a secret code, normally consisting of a series of words known as a seed phrase or a private key. A private key is just a string of numbers and letters. The key works like a normal key, as only those with the key can open the lock and therefore access the crypto. With non-custodial wallets, you're in charge of your assets, so keeping your key safe is vitally important. We'll cover storing our keys safely in another video. But essentially, you don't want to take a photo of it, put that photo on the cloud, you don't want to leave it in a place where someone else can find it, and you want to make sure you record your key completely exactly right because no one but you will ever have those keys. And these keys, when kept safely from prying eyes, become impossible to hack or guess. Mathematically, it's just not possible. Popular non-custodial wallets on Solana include Phantom, Soulflare, Ledger, and Backpack Wallet. All of these wallets are available on your computer and on your phone, with the exclusion of Backpack, which is currently not on mobile. These wallets provide convenient access to your cryptocurrencies, and you can access them anytime, not 9am to 4pm Monday to Friday, like banks, but literally any time. Other blockchains, like Ethereum, use wallets like Metamask, Trust Wallet, Rainbow Wallet, and Coinbase Wallet, just in case you're familiar with those. It's generally recommended to store your cryptocurrencies securely in a non-custodial wallet. However, if you plan to buy or sell crypto for fiat currency, you'll also need a custodial wallet, such as the one provided by Binance.com, Coinbase.com, Crypto.com, etc. And as I mentioned before, you normally start with one of those wallets. Normally, not always. So to be able to do everything that the crypto world has to offer and pay your bills in the real world, you'll need a custodial and a non-custodial wallet. Now this is not financial advice, and nothing in any of my videos ever is. And some people will disagree with this statement, but it's generally best practice to keep most of your assets in a non-custodial wallet with not as much in a centralized wallet, like a minimal amount in Binance, Coinbase, etc. Now Solana is a type of blockchain where you can do so many things, 
play games, collect digital art such as NFTs, earn interest, take out a loan, as well as send and receive. When you use Solana, you must have a wallet like Phantom or Backpack, otherwise you cannot do much. Binance and Coinbase, they just allow buying and selling, and there is so much more than that. There are many opportunities in the crypto wallet industry. Some of these companies are worth billions of dollars. So aside from the fact that you need one in order to interact with the blockchain, it's also a good idea to be familiar with them because these companies need talented employees to help make crypto easier, safer, and better for all of us. And there's also a huge push to increase diversity, particularly to encourage more women to join the Web3 crypto space. So that's what a crypto wallet is. In our next video, we'll get our own wallet. And in the videos after that, I'll show you how to use that across the entire blockchain. So jump into the next lesson and remember, stay curious.